Roy, come on up here. Let's see. Sonny, I need you up here too because you have a job to do. I was going to tell you earlier because you would have thought I was, you would have gotten nervous. No, too late, I really am. Too late to get nervous. Oh, okay. You got some boxes. Great. Yeah, a couple okay. boxes. Okay. Uh, come over here. Well, because you're on national television again. <laughs> again. Uh, in, in the scriptures, we read uh, several times. Oh, I, I, I forgot this one part. Let's go play the back. Uh, in the scriptures, we read several times where the Apostle Paul will commend the different churches for the things that they've done. And I've never really done a whole lot of that here in, in commending you guys for the efforts that you do. Because sometimes we don't want to get to the point of being boastful or proud or doing anything to that nature. Okay? But then when I read what Paul did about the churches uh, and, and the things that he said about them, then, uh, you know, I will boast in the Lord about what has taken place here at Asher Glade. Uh, Asher Glade, and I'm going to let them give you the numbers because they've, they've, you know, they've worked very hard, but it's not just them. It's this entire church. It's, a, it's the community. It's, it's, it's everyone in the Asher Glade area that's come together uh, for this event. And so I'm going to let uh, Roy talk a little bit about it, and Sonny can talk to you. She has a poem she's going to read. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we do want to thank everybody. I mean, this is a whole church, whole community activity, and we're, uh, you know, it's a blessing from God, you know. I mean, we uh, we have to give God the praise, you know, for our growth because um, we continue to grow. I mean, uh, um, we had our shoot, or had our dinner, which we raised about enough money for roughly 400 boxes for that and um, then uh, then the church stepped in and a lot of individuals you know brought shoe boxes and stuff and uh, so um, a total this year I mean we did surpass last year by a little bit so uh, um, we did have like 650 just from Asher Glade only and uh, which is great for such a small church you know and um, and we are starting to grow. I mean, Sonny and I is getting discouraged, you know, as a collection center. We're about ready to give it up, you know. And, uh, but so far, you know, the community has started to come in, you know, bring some boxes in. I mean, um, there hasn't been one day yet that we didn't receive at least one or two boxes, you know, and some we 40 and 60, you know. So um, I think we're up to getting close to 800, you know, from total, you know, right now, so um, that's, we're going to have a pretty full pickup, I mean, <laughs> so, you get a big top on. so, I mean, it looks like we're going to have stuff packed in the back seat and stuff too this year, so um, next year maybe, hopefully, if God blesses more, we'll have to borrow your trailer again, so, um, which that's, uh, um, we got all gun hose the first year and got a trailer the first year and then uh, really didn't need it but uh, hopefully next year we'll need it again so just continue the work and uh, um, fans already started for next year so <laughs> uh, we need to uh, you know get the, keep the ball rolling so that's about all I have yeah it, it's it's pretty amazing you think about uh, would you say about 650 650 yeah I just yeah, 625 from Asher Glade. Okay. 625 from Asher Glade. Okay. It's still too late to donate. Is it no. still too late to donate? It's never it's too late. Or tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. <laughs> Today and tomorrow. We have two more days to collect yet, so I mean. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And, and, you know, we see the thank yous on that video. That's just a, obviously just such a small representation. You think of the number of lives that are touched around the globe. Uh, how many people come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Because within those boxes, besides the things that are packed by you guys, they also put in a, uh, uh, what's it called, Fan? What do I think? Fillers. 
Not fillers, I'm thinking of the book. Journey. The Greatest Journey? That, is that, yeah, The Greatest Journey. Yes, they put that in to, to, to help point children to Jesus Christ so that they can come to know Him as their Lord and Savior. On this side of heaven, we're not going to know. We're not going to know. We may get a note back from someone that said that they received it, but uh, you never know. Uh, somebody may that you sent a shoebox to, maybe somebody on a video someday. But on this side of heaven, we'll never know the impact of just what your shoeboxes did, let alone all the shoeboxes collected uh, for, the, yeah, for, this, for this event. So, Sonny, she has a poem she's going to read, and then we'll, uh, then we'll ask God's blessing upon the boxes. Okay, if children are to find their way to God, we must point the way. OCC, I've penned this poem to tell a tale of children far and near, whose lives are filled with poverty, famine, war, and fear. They need to know that someone cares far more than our displays. They need to know the Savior's love and his sinless ways. The shoebox comes with many things, some toys and soap and clothes, a yo-yo and a jumping rope, a doll with hair that glows, crayons, books, and writing pads, mittens, hats, and games, candy, rings, and puzzles, flashlights, cars, and planes. The simpler, the smiles appear and all enjoy the treasures that we send, but the greatest gift they ever know is Jesus, Savior, Friend. Let's pray. Please stand with me. Would you stand? Just two shoe boxes of many. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you to give you glory and honor, to lift you up. Lord, we just pray for these shoe boxes. We pray, Lord God, that the contents of the shoe boxes, as they go out across this globe, Lord God, we pray that, that lives are changed. We pray, Lord God, that through all of this, some child can come to know you, some parent can come to know you as their Lord and Savior and give themselves to you. That is the ultimate purpose of what we do, Lord God, we just pray your blessings to be upon it. Yes, Lord, we acknowledge that smiles we put on children's faces and there's nothing greater than a smile of a child. Lord, and we pray for that likewise. But Lord God, that, that this ministry of Operation Christmas Child, the shoebox ministry, Father, we pray and ask that lives are touched. And only you can do that, Father. But we're just simply your hands and feet. And so we just pray your anointing to be upon the boxes. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Not bring my agenda up with me. Well, these are going out to those who are in their homes, not able to get out, uh, the elderly, uh, just people throughout the community. Uh, and it's just a special blessing, just a little something, but it's still a special blessing for them from you guys. Uh, we have 50 of them made up, and like I said, they're going to be just going throughout the community, and, and you'd be surprised how this touches a person's life, just to, just to know that somebody's thinking about them. Uh, and we have all 50 taken care of. We have all 50 taken care of. Okay. So again, please, if you would, please stand with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have this opportunity, Lord, to give uh, just, just this fruit, Lord, to those who are shut in, to those who are elderly, to those who are not able to get out and about, Lord. And we pray and ask, Lord God, that you bless uh, each and every one of these fruit baskets. We pray and ask that you bless the recipients, Lord, and let them know of your great love for them. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, good morning. Okay, let me get my thoughts together here. It's good to see everyone out today on this blustery morning. We uh, didn't get the snow they expected us to get, 
but I understand some still coming, and uh, it's that time of year, I guess, isn't it? If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you would, to Colossians chapter 1, and we're going to look at verses 9 through 14 this morning. Colossians 1, verses 9 through 14. Paul writes this. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all that's gone on here today. And we just lift it all up to you and turn it over to you and give it to you, Lord God. And now, Lord God, for your word, we pray your anointing to be upon it this morning. Speak through me, Lord God, what needs to be spoken to those who are here today, so that you may be glorified and honored. And may your word not return to you void. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So I was thinking this morning, uh, on my way actually here today, and you know, we're, we're, you know, we're in the season of Thanksgiving, we're in the season of Christmas, and, and we have many rights, we have many opportunities, I guess I should say, to be thankful for so much, because God has blessed us with so much. And yet, in this walk that we have, Sometimes we look at the situations that we go through in life and, and the seasons, and a lot of times people will say, well, what do I have to be thankful for? As they reflect back on the year, maybe you've had some challenges and some struggles and some difficulties. Maybe you've received bad news, and things just haven't gone the way that you really expected them to go. And so you kind of scratch your head and wonder about it. And so I was this morning just reflected towards uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 for just one, one moment. And I just want to just share this with you. And you're very familiar with what I'm, going to, what I'm going to just read to you out of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 8. And it says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. And so when I read that, I realize that we do, we go through a lot of things in our lifetime, and we need to put things in perspective, and it's not always an easy thing to do. Uh, but I'm reminded from, from the writings of James that every good and perfect gift comes from our Father, sent down from heaven to us. He blesses us beyond our wildest dreams. And yes, we go through difficulties and we go through challenges in life. And, and it's not always easy. But yet at the same time, we have to understand that every good and perfect gift comes from Him. And that He does love each and every one of us. And while there may be a season for all things, we have to understand that God is always with us through all those challenging circumstances, through all those situations we may be going through. 
In uh, Ephesians 5.20, Paul tells me to the church there, he says, Always give thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in our call to worship this morning out of 1 Thessalonians 5.18, he says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. Whatever it is that we may be going through, we need to be giving thanks to God because He is the creator of all things. We need to give Him thanks. But from our reading out of Colossians this morning, I want, to, I want us to take a specific look at verses 12, 13, and 14. So if I can, let me just go back to those and saying this, out of Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. It says, In giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The first thing I want us to look at in Colossians 1.12, it says that what we need to learn is we need to learn that God qualifies Christians, us, to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. God has qualified Christians. Qualified. I can't qualify myself. You know, I've done a lot of things in my life where I've had to qualify for certain things. Maybe a runner may have to run a certain speed to be able to qualify for the finals. We just saw the Olympics this year, and they have this round and this round and this round, and people had to do, you know, swim so fast or they had to get a certain score on something where they had to qualify. But the good news of the scripture this morning is I don't need to be the one who qualifies for heaven. God has qualified me already. He sent his son Jesus Christ to this earth to die for my sins, if I would just accept those, get on my knees and, and, and cry out to God and ask Him to come into my life and ask for forgiveness of my sins and accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I am qualified. Each and every person who does that calls themselves a Christian now. You are now qualified in the sight of God. There's nothing that you can do to earn your salvation. You are qualified. In 1 Peter 3 and 4, talking about disqualification and talking about this inheritance that we have, because we have this inheritance with his holy people. In other words, we together, we together, as long as we can all call ourselves Christians and believe in our hearts that Jesus died for us, and we confess with our mouth, that God is Lord. We are his holy people and we will live in the kingdom of God with one another. In 1 Peter uh, 1, 3 and 4, it says, Praise be to the uh, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. See, God has qualified Christians to share in that inheritance. Each and every one. It's not just for the elect few, but for all Christians. Further down that same chapter in verse 22, Peter wrote this. He says, Now that you have purified yourselves to by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other love one another deeply from the heart for you have been born again not of, imper not of perishable seed but imperishable through the living and enduring word of God to obeying the truth to living in love loving each other deeply that's what God has called us to do to have love one for another Love. love. Love doesn't qualify us because we are qualified, but it's just simply an outward sign that we are qualified. It's, a, it's an outward sign that we are children of the light. 
children of the Most High God? Are those, that, are those out there that you do not love? Are those people out there that you have something against? That you perhaps just can't stand to be around them? Are you genuinely showing the love of God to people? You know, if there's those out there that, that you just can't stand to be around, you need to get on your knees and pray and ask God to show you the good in them and to show you how to love them because you've been qualified. You have the love in you. You just need to express that love. We know that John 3, 16 says that for God so loved the world. The greatest sinner God loves. Surely you can love those who offend you. In the third chapter of 1 Peter, it says to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built, and it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolized baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, or of heaven. It says in Romans 8, 17 that we are heirs, we are co-heirs, or joint heirs with Jesus Christ. If... We partake of his sufferings. In other words, if you are willing to lay yourself on the line, you will have that inheritance with Jesus Christ. If you're willing to lay it all on the line for him, to be joint heirs with Jesus. So the first thing out of Colossians 1.12, we learn that God qualifies Christians to share in that inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of life. The second thing, in the first part of verse 13, we learn that Christians need to be thankful that God has delivered them from the power of darkness. We read in the first chapter of the Gospel of John that Jesus came into this dark world. And you think of the darkness that's out there. See, when Jesus came, the world was so dark that the people couldn't even comprehend, they couldn't understand that darkness. They couldn't understand the light, I should say, of Jesus coming into this world. It's a dark, dark world. We live in today, this 21st century that we live in, and all the things that's going on in this world, we live in a dark world. Darkness all around. Evil is all around. Satan, though he is the father of this world, and it's a dark world. And as Christians, we are living in this world. We need to let our light shine so others can see God living in us. <clears throat> but it's a dark world. And in Ephesians 4, it says, So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. In other words, we cannot be as the world is today. In the futility of their thinking, they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of their ignorance that in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That's what's going on in this dark world that we live in. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to make new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So let me ask you the question. If you are a born-again Christian, are you trying to live in the way of the world today? Because if you're trying to live in the way of the world or if you're trying to fit in with your, your friends or the peer group at school or wherever the circumstance is, and they are walking in darkness, they are doing what is contrary to the scriptures, they are living an immoral life, are you living in the way such as they are to fit in with them? Because God has called you out to be separate. 
to be a different type of person and not the way of the world. The way of the world is total darkness. Total darkness. So the first part of verse 13, we learn that we as Christians need to be thankful to God that he delivered us from the power of darkness. You have been delivered from the power of darkness. Walk in it no more. The second part of that verse in Colossians, we learn that Christians need to thank God because he has brought us into the kingdom of the son that he loves. In John 14, 3, it says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Because of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary, because of his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension, we can now live with him forever in heaven. And in Luke 10, 20, it says, We must rejoice that our names are written in heaven. Are you 100% sure this morning? 100% sure this morning that your name is written in heaven? Are you 100% sure this morning that if you were to die today, you'd be going to heaven and spending eternity in the presence of God? Do you know that beyond a shadow of a doubt? See, because you can know that. If you have any uncertainties this morning about that, then you have an opportunity today to get it right and know beyond a shadow of a doubt. And if you do not know that, please see me so that we can talk because it is a guarantee. See, God's not up there with a pencil and one day he's writing your name in the book of life and then another day he's erasing it because you did something wrong. But is your name written in that book? Are you 100% sure? If not, please see me. The next thing, and when we look at uh, verse 14, we learn that Christians should thank the Lord for making it possible to have redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. He shed his blood for you and I. We look in Romans, it says this in the sixth chapter. It says, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you, whether you are a slave to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to, leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that, though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of the teachings that now claim your allegiance. You have been set free from sin, and have become slaves to righteousness. We have redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. Again, it's not of your own works. It's not of the things that I do. It's not of the works of your parents, anything that they did. It's not of the money that you have. It is strictly through the blood of Jesus Christ that you have been redeemed. You've been set free. You're no longer a slave. No longer a slave to sin, but a slave to Jesus Christ and to righteousness. And just the last thing I just want to point out this morning as we look at uh, verse 14, that we need to thank God that he's made it possible to re we receive forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ. The forgiveness of sins. He died for our sins. The wages of sins is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. In Hebrews 3.13, it says, But encourage one another daily, as long as it's called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We're to be thankful for all that God has given us, for all the blessings that he's poured out upon us. But most of all, we need to be thankful as Christians that we'll be spending eternity with him. That he paid the price for your sins and for my sins. He paid the price for the sins of the world. We just need to accept that free gift. 
That's what we need to be thankful for this morning, throughout this next week, Thanksgiving Day, throughout this Christmas season. Thanking Him for what He's done for you. What He's done for you. Let's pray. Father, we do thank You for what You've done, that You have qualified us, that it's nothing that we can do on our own, but rather You, Lord, gave it all for us. We thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. And may that just what was said this morning, Lord, be buried within our hearts so that we can come to know you more. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, please stand. We have a closing song. Might have to turn this one up, Brett, because it's really soft. A new song for you. Before you today, and there's just one thing that I want to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've given to me. Blessings I cannot see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Remember, God is good all the time. All the time, He is good.
So much to be thankful for this morning. Father, as we leave this place today, we pray and ask that you be with us, watch over us, keep us in your care, put your shield of protection around our cars, be with us in our homes, be with us, Lord, wherever we may be. Just watch over us and keep us safe, Lord. Help us, Lord, each and every day to remember to give you thanks because all, every good gift, every good and perfect gift comes from you, from heaven. Bless this church, each and every one, Lord. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.